Hey guys, it's Tamara. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Welcome. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that a subscriber asks that I focus on, and that is social anxiety disorder. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel for those who are subscribed. And for those who are not, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button, especially if you're new, so you can stick around with us and continue to be a part of our community. The benefits for you today in this video is that you're going to learn about a variety of anxiety disorders. I'm also going to hone in and zone in on social phobia or social anxiety disorder. So let's just go ahead and get started, okay? So I, I see a lot of um, clients who have anxiety disorders. For the most part, uh, when it comes to anxiety disorders, I see a lot of kids and teens. Um, what I'm seeing across the board is uh, a condition known as generalized anxiety disorder. Uh, the whole foundation of the disorder is a generalized nervousness about everything. You're not just nervous about uh, something that happened in school. You're not just nervous about something that happened on your job, but you're nervous about that and some other things, including what's going on in the world, including what's going on in your extended family. So really, the way that I like to describe generalized anxiety disorder is by saying it's a compilation of things that leads to a breakdown in your ability to focus and in your ability to pay attention and in your ability to cope as well. So uh, generalized anxiety disorder is pretty common. Uh, research suggests uh, that about 2% of our population struggles with generalized anxiety disorder. It's really uh, not as common as you would think, uh, but it is it is common among children and, and adolescents. Adults are a little bit different. All right, so we've got an generalized anxiety disorder, but then there are other disorders that I wanna focus on in this video uh, so that you can have a little bit of understanding of, of kind of um, the differences between anxiety and depression. Okay, because we did a video uh, a couple weeks ago, I think it was, about uh, major depressive disorder with psychotic features. And there were a lot of symptoms in there that could look like anxiety. Uh, depression and anxiety do overlap sometimes and they do look very similar. So it's a little bit hard to determine sometimes in a clinical setting, is this depression or is this anxiety? Uh, but I'm hoping that this video will kind of separate things for you, all right? So let's talk a little bit about uh, the different types of anxiety disorders. Uh, a lot of people just say, I'm anxious, but they don't really know what they're anxious about. And they don't really know that their anxiety can be very, very specific. All right, so let's start with the first one. The first uh, anxiety disorder is known as obsessive compulsive disorder. I'm sure a lot of you are trying to like wrap your head around that. Wait a minute, I thought it was about obsessions. I thought it was about compulsions. But you mean to tell me, Tamara, that it's an anxiety disorder? Absolutely. What happens in OCD is that the brain gets fixated on something that creates anxiety. Anxiety is defined as an emotional and psychological reaction to stress. Okay, It's an emotional and psychological reaction to stress. Obsessive compulsive disorder is a condition that's triggered by anxiety. What happens with OCD is that the more you begin to focus in on that one specific thing or possibly a variety of things that makes you anxious, you can become obsessed about it. You can start to ruminate, right? And rumination is very similar to the term obsession. It's just something that you constantly think about in a loop, right? You never end up at a better ending. Um, you just keep going over the same thing over and over and over. So you can become very obsessive, but then we also have compulsions and compulsions are behavioral responses to the obsession. And the goal behind a compulsion is that you reduce your anxiety by performing the compulsion. A compulsion could be something like, I have to touch the table five different times, five different times and then stop. Then I touch the table five more times and I count to two because if I don't, the world's gonna end. Right. Or it could be checking locks and double checking locks and double checking locks. Right. So that obsessive rumination or mental process of going over something over and over and over creates the heightened anxiety, which then leads to the compulsion. And the compulsion is there to reduce the anxiety. Where OCD begins to become a problem is when the compulsions begin to outweigh logical thinking, sense, and an ability to kind of look at something objectively 
uh, and to look at something from a logical perspective. Uh, so compulsions can become so bad that you do the compulsion knowing that the end result is going to be the same. But it's almost like an alcoholic in a sense. You, you strive to uh, perform that compulsion so that you can avoid the withdrawal symptoms, right? Because if you don't perform the compulsion, then you have all this heightened tension and anxiety. When you perform that compulsion, the anxiety comes down. So it's a loop. It's called the OCD loop. It's terrible for some people, okay? Now, let's go to the next anxiety disorder. The next anxiety disorder is social phobia or social anxiety. Social phobia or social anxiety is an anxiety that kicks into gear when you're in social settings, when you're in crowds, when you're in school, when you're at work with lots of people, when you have to make phone calls, when you have to order food, when you have to pick up something from, from the grocery store, right? When you have to go shopping. It's places where, uh, you know, there are large numbers of people that trigger social anxiety or social phobia. Uh, most kids that I see struggle with that. Some of my adolescents struggle with that as well. Uh, but again, the whole idea behind that is that you're not anxious any other time. It's just when you're in a social setting. All right. Uh, the next is post-traumatic stress disorder. And we talk a lot about that on this channel. PTSD is an anxiety disorder uh, that has a variety of symptoms that kind of pushes it, out, pushes it out of the category of anxiety. Anxiety, again, is an emotional and psychological reaction to stress uh, or to triggers. And for those who have post-traumatic stress disorder, they begin to have flashbacks, they begin to have night tears and night sweats, and you know they begin to have fits and uh, mood symptoms and things like that. So PTSD, uh, if you ask me, if we're gonna look on that spectrum, social phobia is over here on the end, right? Generalized anxiety disorder may be in the moderate side, and PTSD is on the far right, which is more the moderate severe uh, part of that spectrum. I think PTSD is a category in and of itself uh, that is is a little bit separate from every other anxiety disorder. It really uh, takes a toll on people who are diagnosed with it uh, in a little bit of a different way than OCD and social phobia. And that's not to say that those, those disorders are mild or uh, should be minimized, but that's just to say that PTSD really seems to be the most severe of the anxiety disorders, okay? All right, so the next disorder is panic disorder, and those are panic attacks. You guys have probably had those before. It's increased heart rate, right? It's uh, sweating, um, increased salivation. You may start to see specks like you're gonna pass out, right? You may get dry mouth. You may get stomach aches or stomach nausea, right? You may get so nervous that you begin to feel faint or lightheaded or dizzy. Uh, so panic disorder can be very, very debilitating. It depends, again, on that spectrum where you are from mild, moderate to severe. Now, there's a disorder that most children struggle with, and that is called separation anxiety disorder. Separation anxiety disorder is a uh, disorder that kicks in when the child separates from the caregiver or when a child separates from somebody that they are close to or that they trust and the anxiety can be so bad that it can be uh, disabling and create difficulty functioning okay so these are anxiety disorders uh, that we mostly see in clinical settings and I'm sure you guys have if you haven't experienced it you've certainly heard about it so let me just point out five symptoms that you're likely to experience okay the first is excessive fear anxiety disorders are characterized by excessive fear right it's not a, a balanced fear it's not a foundational fear where you get a little bit anxious but you can go back down it's excessive fear so the fear is way up here when the situation is down here, okay? The next symptom is worry of judgment. Most individuals with anxiety disorders or social phobia, uh, especially generalized anxiety disorder, they hate judgments. Let me just throw in social phobia as well. They hate judgments. They don't want to be judged. They don't want to pre be prejudged. Sometimes they don't want to even be positively judged. They don't want any of that, all right? Three is intolerance of embarrassment. It's really hard for people with anxiety disorders to endure embarrassment. They're already anxious. They're already emotionally and psychological, psychologically anxious. They don't want to deal with the embarrassment on top of that. All right. The next is emotional and psychological discomfort. And that's kind of second guessing yourself and having trouble with evaluating the situation and balancing things out. 
uh, also uh, in an ability to to bring yourself back to a place of equilibrium once you've gotten thrown off right so that's difficult all right and then the next and the last one is disproportionate nervousness the nervousness is way way up here once again and the situation is down here people with anxiety disorders uh, really do struggle with disproportionate fear, anxiety, uh, worry, um, nervousness, embarrassment. So because symptoms are way up here and the situation is actually here, medication plus therapy, so a combination of the two brings everything, everything down, excuse me, back to a level where you can balance yourself and you can function better and you can think better. I'm going to post a video up here where I talked about the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is uh, basically like the gas pedal in our in our bodies, in our system. And then the parasympathetic nervous system is like the brake system, okay? Usually when my kids are having panic attacks, right after I'll joke around and I'll say, you need to learn to pump the brakes. And that's because the brake is the parasympathetic nervous system. Heart rate goes down, excessive worrying goes down, sweating stops salivation stops right the kidneys kick back into gear now you can fill your bladder again you're not numb anymore right blood is flowing in your body appropriately you're not feeling dazed and lightheaded right so the sympathetic nervous system is the part of the system that kicks into gear it's the fight or flight mode when anxiety hits you when when uh, social phobia starts up right when generalized anxiety disorder begins to take over uh, when I talk to little kids like four or five and six or they come and see me for counseling and they're struggling with anxiety I usually call anxiety the bully because it bullies you right it takes you it grabs a hold of you and it says okay we're going over here and and there's very little control that you have over yourself uh, so that can be very very difficult let me also add one last thing guys and it's something that a family member of mine uh, struggles with and one of my clients from the past and it's called agoraphobia about two percent of our population struggles with agoraphobia agoraphobia is a fear of open spaces and it really does prevent social involvement. It creates anxiety, uh, withdrawal, and isolation. People who have a fear of open spaces hate places like arenas, uh, the blinds being open, letting the sun in, living in a house where there's no curtains, things like that. Going into big grocery stores is intimidating. Uh, agoraphobia really is an excessive fear of open spaces. There's really a fear of being vulnerable uh, in a sense. Okay, So these are all uh, anxiety disorders that we tend to struggle with. And uh, I want to come back a little bit later uh, on the channel and talk about ways to cope with this. All right, so stick around for that. Thank you so much for being with me today in this video. If it was helpful, I encourage you to give it a thumbs up and please share it with someone who may benefit from it. You never know. This video could be exactly what they need. All right, guys, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.